I know it's very similar to drawing a gun, but what are the intricacies? Because you have a fixed blade if you're drawing it this way or this way or yeah. whatever. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, right walk now. Walk through that a little right bit. Right now I'm carrying personally what's very comfortable for me. Right. Why? So right now I'm carrying more of a traditional EDC style trainer. Yeah. Right, why? So if when we go to lunch, I can sit down, I can stand up, mm -hmm. I don't have this thing jabbing me in the crotch yep. or hitting me in the hip or anything like yep. that. So this particular blade for me is very comfortable, okay? It's a live blade that I actually carry when I'm at home. Okay. Now, for me personally, it, indexing the same as with your pistol. It's okay. gonna be the same thing. When you rep how you're gonna deploy, work on your indexing. What part of your hand you personally is the most sensitive that you're gonna be able to get okay. a hold of the blade and get positive Kind of contact. your contact point. Yes. So for me, you know, I wanna get this web, the web. The web. up yep. in the gun first. So yep. I know I've got a good grip before I even take the gun out of the holster. Yes, that's exactly right. How do you do so it? So for me personally, what I'll do is, is I'll bring my hands in and I'll draw my hands down okay. and begin to use this part. You're I'll use the flat of my palm with this particular blade. You're kind of catch, you're feeling the knife before you've you're yeah. gotten all the way on the grip. Yeah, so what I'm doing is I'm running my hand here because remember, the blade is very personal. This is a very personal tool. Yeah. This is, it's, it's intimate in nature. Yeah. So the way I handle the blade is that way. So as I run my hand down, I'm, I'm, I'm getting this part of it. Okay. And because this particular blade type, I have this index location okay. where my finger yeah, like is. You, like you have on a gun, you've got yes. these grooves where you have your thumb or your fingers go. So you kind of know you're there every yeah, time. Yeah, because personally, when I, de when I deploy personally, I'm shooting straight for the CPU. Okay. Uh, when I draw, I'm going straight for the face. And that's just harder to defend? Yes, it's very difficult. If anybody's ever read Musashi, five rings, any of those things, the body, the CPU will naturally want to protect the face, yeah. which is going to draw the hands up. Yeah. So if he or she or whatever it is has a weapon, yeah. their hands aren't on the weapon. Their hands are trying to protect the central processing unit. Okay. And I want to come in contact with the hands. I want the bridge to happen. I want contact So they're going to maybe drop hands. Yeah, they're going to, they well, they're going to want to protect their face. Yeah. They're going to want to get there, especially with me going straight to the CPU. Yeah. That's me personally. If I have to defend myself, I'm going straight for the CPU. Yeah with a gun maybe a little bit different, how you may be going for center yeah. of mass. Right, Either right. way, it's you have a particular discipline that okay. you work all the time. And that's really what it's about, consistency and continuity in how you train. I would think that, you know, for gun guys, we do try to practice, you know, at the range. We try to dry fire mm -hmm. at home, get some reps in. If you're carrying a knife for self-defense, obviously you gotta get those reps in. Is it a little bit easier to get those reps in with a knife, perhaps? Very, 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 very easy. And the great part about it, too, is is that all that, I'm not gonna say all of it. I'll say a strong percentage of it will transition over to your gun stuff. Yeah. Because you become um, more diverse and more dynamic in how you move. Yeah. So you become a lot more aware of range and targeting. Like, a, I have a targeting board at my shop with three dots. Okay. And it's basically one, two, three. Okay. That's how I do it, one, two, three. I start with the central processing unit, I go to center of mass, and then I go to an abdominal cut. Kind of like a gun guy would go, okay, two to the body, one to the one head, One to the head, like same that. exact thing. I just come the other way down. Okay. I'm trying to shut the central processing unit down immediately. If they don't put their hands up, I'm gonna score. All right, so if somebody says, I'm on board, but I need to learn, I know I need to get some instruction, where do they start? The biggest thing is, is, is starting with you, the habits, and the consistencies and the training that you already have. And understanding that you have to work within, initially work within the parameters that you already have. Is it worth going to an instructor, spending some I would say days yes. with someone? Try to do a little bit of research. Um, there's a great deal of systems out there now that you can resource and get to that you can find to augment what you're already doing. You know, if you have to try to find ways to fill the gap to get yourself going, that's really what's important. But eventually I find that most people will end up jumping on somebody's ship, right. whether it's Kali or Krav Maga sure. or something. They have a tendency to go ahead and just lock right onto something and that becomes their thing. By all means, please do that. I mean, it's okay to, to go down that road and get really good at one of those disciplines. Absolutely. Probably not a bad idea to maybe cross train that Absolutely. stuff Absolutely, cross train, cross train, cross train. Leave yeah. no stone unturned. Train everything. 